summertime fishing can be an absolute ball breaker. I can't dress it up any other way. time of year when you know everything is alive the trees are in full bloom all the wildlife is out in its masses and, and the carp are just boshing away and moving around and the water's temperatures at its highest so that the carp are going to be their most active and being most active they need to feed and need to eat so therefore you should be catching but that's just not the case with my experience of summer carp and I find it sometimes can be the most infuriating time of year NICAS was calling. I joined up in the spring of 21 and um, there's six waters to go at at the moment. There's probably going to be more coming down the line and each have a very unique and different vibe to them. Most of my time was spent on Brook Hall. Brook Hall, very small, very intimate, only about an acre and a half to two acres. But um, there's some lovely big fish in there. There's about four commons in there that are hovering around a 30 pound mark. Summer fishing, sort of once you get into late May, early June, that's when you can really start saying it's proper summertime. I managed a trip there in June, and uh, when I arrived, I arrived to see Darren Riley, who's one of the team members at Nutribase. He was fishing in what's called the car park swim. It's the place I've done really, really well in. Darren was having an absolute belt of a session. Uh, fishing code, code whites and uh, code bottom baits into the car park swim. He had had a number of fish to 29.10. When I arrived at Lake, Darren had had a 29.15 a few minutes before my arrival and it was in the sling. So I said to him, look, I'm gonna go bounce back to the car, I'll grab the camera gear. And on my way back, his other rod was away. proceeded to land another big fish. Um, this was called the BBC, some, uh, one of the fish that I'd had uh, and made a late record at 30 pound two. Uh, he had the BBC on um, at a little bit more of a spawned out weight of 29.8, I think it was. So he, he had two fish on the mat 
uh, you know, within minutes of each other. Two the eighteen. I mean, absolutely outstanding angling from Darren. You know, he's a really tidy angler, and um, he goes to show right bait, right time, and with backed up with some decent angling skills, you can really maximise on the situation. And that's exactly what he did. So, next to him was uh, my mate Colin in the next swim, and so I moved up to swim three. I managed to have a small uh, 18 pound common. The next day, all the lads were pulling off the lake. I was only there for a short session. The lake went really, really quiet and very empty, so I moved back up to the car park swim. Next morning, I managed to slip uh, the net under a 30 pound seven new lake record on the code white again. were very simple. I was putting out a bed of about, I don't know, half a kilo to a kilo of crumbed code uh, boilies, uh, code pellets, everything soaked in activator. I knew that Loch Gaul was calling me back. Loch Gaul, this big 37 acre lake with only five or six target fish to go for. I knew that was calling me back and I knew I really wanted to crack one of those bigger fish. So uh, it was back to Loch Gaul for a quick weekend uh, and I managed to hook into uh, two fish. Uh, one was a small little pasty of about seven or eight pound and the other one was a 29.8 um, 18. This fish is a bet up fish. This fish has seen war uh, over its lifetime. When I say that, I mean it's, it's had a few savage encounters with otters uh, and you know it doesn't have a nose it doesn't have lips um, it's missing some of its tail and uh, it's it's been fairly fairly hammered unfortunately but you know what what a historic fish it's Ryan Creighton's fish that was originally the Irish record um, when it was at its highest weight which was 31 plus now I've seen this fish on the bank three times um, over a two year period and uh, it, it's, it's, it's always been 30 pound and 30 pound and change. The fish have been spawning quite heavily the previous week. This is a male fish, um, so it, in fairness it was, uh, it was obviously been through the rigours of spawning as well and um, was down a little bit on weight. Does that bother me? Not a job. Couldn't care if it was 20 pound. This is one of the old originals uh, of this, you know, Simo strain. Uh, there's only a few of them left in the lake, a handful. It's just an honor to catch anything like that. It really is spectacular, you know, to have it on the end of your line. So I managed to catch that fish on a code white pop-up. Fish in a PVA bag full of code pellets with activated liquid. Uh, soaked into them with also some beta amino. One of the things that I was doing as well with that, I was pumping in a thing called chopper oil. It's one of the new oils from Nutribates. It's a reverse oil. So basically oils tend to float and float away as soon as they hit the water. It doesn't matter what level they're at, they'll all head to the surface. Now this isn't any different, but what it does, we've been able to blend the oils in a certain manner with other products that keeps them on the deck and it's only when the fish go in and feed on it it disturbs it and sends the oil out pluming which can create a flat spot if you're very windy um, and it gives you an indicator of whether fish are feeding on your zone the sludge the the nickname they're called sludges so we have hemp sludge salmon sludge and we have nut sludge. There is another sludge on the way and it's I've been testing it out. It's called code sludge and it is the code signature. You put it on your pellets, on your boilies, you can put it in your, your PVA bag and stick mix and it will cling to the bottom and it will release little droplets of these oils over an extended period. In the summertime about four hours, sort of spring and autumn maybe six hours but it's a very slow release and whilst it's bringing up stuff to the surface, it's also bringing up other parts of the attractors that are dropping off and, and sort of separating out into the water column. So you've got a whole myriad, myriad of levels where it's, it's actually putting that, that 
scent or bait trail into the uh, water column. So I was filling up the PVA bags with the soap pellet, but then I was also putting the nozzle of the sludge into the actual PVA bag, and then it was a case of just squeezing it all in and then out in the bait boat, dropping it onto the spot, and it was coming down on any weed or debris uh, nicely and presenting a nice clump of, of bait. It, look, it worked really, really well for me. Um, and I managed to catch one of the old originals. So I kind of was able to leave Lock Gall with a happy heart, knowing that, you know, I, I had other business with the NICAS Wars to attend, and, and I really wanted to sort of get stuck into some of the other venues. Glenvale, as I said, the one I'm on here now, it's, it's a very unique venue, and there's a learning curve and a half here as well. These fish are super tricky. They are, they've seen everything for years. They are very cautious. They have very marked uh, patterns of things that they do, routes that they take. Um, it's the snags just behind me here. The big girls tend to sit in there all day. And at night they come out and follow the line of the snags over to the far fence line. And they either go this way or this way. Um, but that doesn't mean you're gonna catch them. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I've got a lot of work to do on this lake to get to that point where I know what I'm doing. This is a, a, a tricky water. There's a stock of a couple of hundred fish, uh, I believe. I don't know the exact numbers. There's a, roughly about um, six fish over 30 pound. Um, the lake record was 31 last year. It's now been smashed, obliterated twice in two days by Marty McKibben. Marty's one of our guys on in the uh, Nutribates team. He's um, an awesome guy, a very tidy angler, and uh, he managed to catch last year's record at 31. And he came back a year later to the day and he managed to winkle out not one but two late records. The first one was 33 pound and change, which just wow. And the next day he had one at 34 for which just goes to show the power of BFM and code because they're the baits he was using. Um, BFM has been a long time favorite of his and uh, you know, sort of a bit of a snowman jobby of BFM topped by a liver supreme, that's his signature go-to bait. But the code took one of the records as well. So, um, you know, code is one of those baits that, that just really seems to winkle out the better fish. I've managed to um, do two late records on Brook Hall this year on code. They'd never seen it before and it caught two of the biggest fish in the lake. Um, that says an awful lot to me. It's, uh, it's one of those baits that I think over the time will establish itself in with the greats with Trigger and the likes. Yeah, having a water that's not on your doorstep is, is always going to be challenging. You know, this particular venue, 
This is Glenvale, part of the NICAS group of orders in Northern Ireland. It is roughly about two hours and 40, 45 minutes from my front door. So it's not a place I can nip into and walk around and get in tune with. Um, it's not a place I can study on a regular basis or bait up on a regular basis and introduce a bait and keep it going in. So I need to use a bait that I know from the get-go they're going to have. And code for me is it. I've access to Trigger, Trigger Ice, BFM, uh, or any multitude of other baits within the neutral baits range. And for me, um, I, I need something that I know is going to work spring, summer, autumn, instantly. Uh, and for me, I don't have the luxury of a campaign bait. Trigger is more of a campaign bait where you want to be trickling it in. Once they switch on it, they're, they're hard to catch on anything else. Um, Trigger is an incredible bait, but it's, for me it's a bit more of a campaign bait where I'd need to be coming up and putting it in on a regular basis. I can't do that. I need something that's instant, that, but that is still going to be very nutritious for the fish. I need something that's going to be able to catch from the get-go and keep catching all year long. Whenever I come up here, I can use it, and Code's got it all. It's a bird food base mix with huge levels of protein in it. It's got nut meals, it's got milk proteins, it's got bird foods. Um, the base, the actual nucleus of the base is our Enervite Gold. You know, it doesn't get better than that, to be honest with you, and with everything else added to it and tweaked, along with the enzyme packages and the range of liquids that can be used with it to activate the bait and get it really primed. For me there's nothing to touch it. Um, it's perfect for my type of fishing and also it's bivy friendly, car friendly, wife friendly because it smells absolutely divine. <laughs>